Would you like to learn a hunting camp favorite recipe and the secret to grilling antelope medallions? Join me, David Bancroft, and my friend Joe Thomas for Prime Cuts Wild Game Edition. Hey y'all, David Bancroft here. I'm excited to be back for the season two of Prime Cuts Wild Game Edition. And today we've got a very special outdoorsman and ex-mark ambassador, Joe Thomas. Hey David, how are you? Buddy? How are you, brother? Glad to be, glad to be here. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I can't tell you how many times and how many hours I spent watching as a child the Bassmaster Classic and you and all those guys, I mean. Over, look, over the years, yeah, I, I did, I fished the Bassmaster Trail for 25 years, you make me feel a little old. And so yeah, I traveled all over North America over about a 15 year period and I just finished my uh, Super Slam North American 29 big game animals. Killed all but two with a bow, so you know, it was, it was a challenge. Had to do a lot of them several times, but uh, I, I, I love hunting and fishing. Uh, you know, my family's been raised around it. Everything we do, our whole, everything we do to make a living has always been about a rod and reel and a bow and arrow, and uh, it's it's been a good ride. I'm jealous. Oh well, I've, I've enjoyed it. You, I mean, you've I, got a pretty good occupation too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm always first in line for the food because I'm the chef. Yeah, but, yeah. But I hear it, man. It's awesome, and I'm I'm glad that you're with us today. And I mean, I, I know what you brought us to cook. I know the feature. Yeah. That we're going to be featuring, and, and and so this was a bow kill. Yes. And this was a. It was an antelope that I, right. I took very recently. In, in Wyoming, near Buffalo, Wyoming, at, with a, a good buddy of mine. This is just gorgeous. I mean, this is beautiful, yep. deep red. I mean, that is... What that is, is that's that's the tenderloin of the okay. antelope. And when I had uh, when we had a process, we, we actually had the tenderloins butterflied, which the cool thing about it, if you see it there, is when it comes out of the package, Man. literally it'll separate into just about the right, the right sized medallions mm -hmm. or chunks Let's do it. All right. Show me the secrets. Well, so basically what we're gonna do, we've got some that's already marinated here, but we make a marinade out of olive oil, soy sauce, and the key ingredient here is Montreal steak sauce. I'm and I know, this, yes. and I know, I know you're a restaurateur, you like you you deal with the best things in the world, but this stuff tastes good. So that's really the marinade. That's it, very simply. Okay. And um, I'm gonna just go ahead and use this spoon to go stir it. it with. Stir it up real good. And then once I get it stirred up and I get it mixed up real good, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour it on the antelope medallions. Okay. So we're good to go here? Oh yeah. All right. Look at that. And now you will get a little bit of clumping of that seasoning, but that that can be uh, you know can be remedied by just kind of mixing it up. You can just kind of mix it up. Sometimes just what I'll do is I'll take it evenly. Yeah, I'll take my fingers sometimes and spin it a little bit, and then what we'll do mm -hmm. is we'll actually um, once we've got it marinated there, uh, you know, completely covered, then what you can do is you can just take a, a Ziploc bag or something okay. like that. And you put it in a Ziploc bag. So you can put it in the fridge yeah. or anything like that. And, and the only thing I would say is you want to do it for no more than about 24 hours. Okay. And then you want to turn the bag, you know, just whenever you think about it. Go in and, and you know, half time at the football game, go in and flip the bag over about every four, five, six hours to where you get good distribution so it doesn't puddle in it too much. Yeah. But, uh, um, I mean, in this, you can smell in the marinade. It's obviously, you've got the, the brightness coming from, you know, the fruity olive oil, but then now you've got the Montreal steak seasoning, the black pepper, you've got the, the granulated garlic, the dried garlic in there that's super fragrant, and then just super like unctuous and, uh, you know, savory from that soy sauce. And I mean, no doubt this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, as simple as it is, and, and when you look at the recipe, you go, man, that's just too simple. But guys like simple, grillers like simple, hunters like simple. But this is still in hunting camp. This is still like compact flavor, right? Absolutely. Here. I mean, big yeah. time. Yeah, and it just, it just with with the antelope, the lean antelope, it just works perfectly. And then so after 
24 hours. Right, after 24 hours, this has been sitting 24 hours. Flip the bag three or four times, and you wanna let it sit in your refrigerator, obviously, keep it cool, mm -hmm. and uh, that's pretty much the, the finished marinade product right there. So, so this is ready for the grill. It is, we're absolutely ready for the All grill. All right, let's do it then. We got the charcoal hot, and so. I'm gonna spin around this way, let's go oh, to this okay. grill here. Gotcha, gotcha, gonna use that one there. Yep. So let's just uh, lift a little heat out of it, dude, just a little bit there. Got him. And then I'll let you hold that thing up there. Okay. And then what we're gonna do, is now we don't want to cook these too long. Yeah. Okay, that's really important. You got our clean force there. So this is this is lump coal and it's ripping hot. I mean, I guess you want it hot because you don't want to overcook these. That's things. exactly right. You kind of want to that sear on the outside, mm. but you want to have it you know kind of tender on the inside and, okay. and kind of pink. But uh, we want to we want to cook them fairly fast and not too long. Sounds good on so, there. Yeah, because I mean the, the medallions are pretty thin. Now you could right. obviously on the on the back strap you could cut them a little thicker if you yeah, wanted. You could. I like I said I chose to have these. Uh, um, you know, butterfly, you know, because that, that's just about the right size when you do that. You can pull them apart without e even having to put a knife into the meat, which is kind of nice sometimes. We, you can just pull Everything them apart. These are trend ready to go. Exactly. The only thing you want, ever, you might want to look at every now and then, and these didn't really have any of it, is you know how you get that little bit of, of sinew or sil uh, silvery uh, fat? Yeah, sinew, yeah, sinew and silver skin. Anything that, that you get that's silver or white, I typically would trim it off. But we got really fortunate totally agree. This, this animal did not have any of that going on. And so there we go. Hmm, man. Yes, sir, they look absolutely stunning. So what temperature do you like to hit with these? You know, it, it, it varies. Like I said, it depends a lot of times on, on, on the audience too, you know, I mean, who, who's, who's eating them. But, uh, um, I, you know, I, I basically go by feel, you know, I really okay. do. It's, I don't have a certain temperature that I like to, I like to hit with them. Because like what my- What is your preference? My, What's your steak preference? Um, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm, a me, I'm kind of a medium to medium well guy. Okay. My, my, I mean, excuse me, medium to medium rare guy. My yeah. wife though, she would start with this one right here because obviously the smaller they are, the faster they're gonna cook. So she's gonna, she's always gonna choose the smaller one. The smaller okay. one will, and, and that's that's really the way it works out. These are ready to come off right now. Yeah. The larger ones will just naturally be more rare, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll usually segment those out on the plate, and then I'll go from the, the larger ones to the smaller ones, because it's gonna get progressively, it's gonna be progressively more well done as the small, as mm -hmm. you bring the smaller ones off, which is just logical, and and that's what oh. you end up with. For now, let's let these rest. Okay. I've got some taters and some mushrooms that we're gonna throw together okay. before we grill your asparagus. Okay, gotcha. Um, first, I'm gonna get these potatoes, and I, I've just kind of par roasted these a little bit, mm -hmm. and these are fingerlings, very simple, salt, pepper, olive oil, and we've got a beautiful wood fire oven in here, and I just, Figured we had to use it. Yeah, we've got to use yeah, that. So I've got yeah. these. We're going to throw these in. And pay deep into the abyss. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roast up. So I've got some beautiful, these are blue oyster mushrooms. And I mean, you can see that cluster. That is absolutely stunning. So I snagged these on the way in, and, and I wanted to just, honestly, I'm going to just cut right off the cluster here like this. Oh, nice. And get some of these sauteed up. Nice hot skillet. And now once I get a little bit of color on these mushrooms, this is basically just a, like a, a beef stock gravy that we made. Really rich. I think it's gonna go great with your antelope. Okay. And you know, once again, I mean, you're talking about a free range, naturally foraging animal. Absolutely. And, and I mean, smell the earthiness from these mushrooms yeah. right here. Yeah. Like that yeah. just smells like you were turkey hunting and kicked up some, some fresh, you know, soil out of the ground and you just get the smell of forest. Absolutely. I thought this would be a great accompaniment to what you provided for us today. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt, just kind of season the layers. Get some real good color. You can hear these sizzling. Just a little shizzle sizzle. So you can see now we've got some good sear on these mushrooms. See how brown they're getting? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna take this, which is just basically a really rich 
Now in the restaurant, we would call this demi-glace. It would be fancy because we, we make a stock with uh, the vegetables and then deglaze with red wine and then we add the beef stock and then reduce it down for multiple days to clarify it. Mm -hmm. So I took all the hard work from my team. They made this and I, and yeah. I thieved it for today to, to match this antelope, but we're literally just gonna pick these mushrooms up with this sauce. And then cut the heat. We are ready. Looking good, man. So now we've got our sauce, our potatoes. We're gonna grill some asparagus next. Now, can I cheat? Can I go ahead and slice a little bit of this before we even get going? Absolutely, if you want to. I, I, I gotta know what this guy's all about right here. This one just looks absolutely absurd. He's rested long enough. I think we hit it just about on the numbers too, as far as the. Uh, I want it to have its it own special moment. Mm -hmm. All the hard work that you put into this hunt. Yeah. And I mean. I think. I, yeah, I think we we cooked it just I about perfectly too. I think he smashed it. Yeah, just absolutely the, crushed it. Heat just right. I mean, that is just. You can see how it's kind of dark on the outside and then pink. In unbelievable. The you see, it's rested long enough, obviously. It's not running after we cut. <laughs> I'm going in for the, for the kill. Yeah, I gotta do the same. Yeah, oh my goodness gracious. Cheers, mate. You got it. I was too fast. <laughs> I was on you. Yep. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Other than the good smell when you're hunting, that's about all you get out of it, you know? Well, let's so, do the asparagus. Got okay, got it. I think we're in a good position. And we're position. gonna use these dry and just go ahead and put them on the grill dry, right? Okay. All righty. So I guess obviously you'll have to lay them across the, the yeah. grates, right? Yep, so we want to lay them exactly like this, just right like that. They're gonna cook pretty quick. So not everybody has this amazing oh, yeah. oven. So what would you typically, if you were gonna do those potatoes uh, without without this type of an oven, what would you do outdoors? Would you do it on a grill? Or? I mean, you could yeah. you could throw them in the grill. Mm -hmm. You could shut the lid, and you could you could do them kind of hearth style. Mm -hmm. Throw them in the oven, just the same, and finish them. But you know, I, I par baked these, mm -hmm. or sorry, par roasted them. Yeah, and and got most of the work done. And now you can see it's just got that blistering and that crispy crust that you can hear. I mean, Great. just kind of crackle. Yeah, yeah. And that's because of the wood fire oven mm -hmm. because. I mean, it's 600 to 50 to 700 degrees in there. It is a, an inferno. Right. And I think getting that little bit of kiss of smoke on it is, is adds a little bit of nuttiness mm -hmm. and really finishes out potatoes. And I mean, what we're going is, is full impact flavor here. Mm -hmm. This isn't just hunting camp appetizer anymore. Right, right. What you've put together and, and let me participate a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be a really awesome. Well, measure. and the thing is, is now you've taken you've taken this hunting camp appetizer yep. and you've turned it into something that you could serve to to your 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 most uh, scrutinizing guests. You know what I mean, really? And, and I call that teamwork. Them. I didn't yeah. I didn't turn it. We did this. <laughs> I got you. Okay. You made shake and bake. I yeah. just helped. I got. You. Do, do we have a? What do we want to put those on? We want to go. I think we're just gonna snag them. You're braver than I am. I don't have any feeling in my hands anymore. I was gonna say. So I can take steamy things, I'm just this. Uh, so I think what we'll do here is, is kind of garnish some asparagus. We'll just leave this almost like it's going family style. You absolutely. cool with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're talking hunting camp. Cause we're gonna be digging into it from both sides. Man, yeah, we'll <laughs> drop some of these taters in there. I'm gonna give you that final touch, All right. that garnish. I mean, look at these guys, they're crispy. I know over there in Cameraland, y'all are just like, what? That's real, this is real food happening in a backyard. My buddies would be like, he's making it pretty, we're just gonna eat it. <laughs> I'm gonna go sauce. Yeah. Now you can see how rich those look. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, red wine, bottle of blend, mm -hmm. a Budweiser. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really matter, I think. All right, so we're gonna put some of these mushrooms right over the medallions. Nice. My wife, Kristen, would just go straight Cabernet, right to it. 
And it sounds like I think your wife Absolutely, would be, for sure. They would be talking about us in the corner. Yeah, for sure. At, at the hunting camp. She, I, doesn't, I she doesn't need wine to do that. <laughs> nor does mine, <laughs> nor does mine. Uh, Love you, honey. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good to mean it. Sorry, Diane. <laughs> We're not sorry. Yeah, yeah. We're eating this yeah. without you. <laughs> and then the final. All right, the piece de resistance. Yeah, yeah. And, and basically this is this is a you know it gives it a little bit of texture, it gives it a little bit of mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's a, an appearance thing too, but it actually gives it a little bit so of. So you're that just gonna kind of pull that yeah. and sprinkle yeah, some yeah, like absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. Just yep. kind of sprinkle it on, and it gives it a nice look. But it also, like I said, it gives it just a little bit of texture. And what's the other word I'm looking for here? Um, it's just that, that toasted taste of those sesame. A little bit of nuttiness yeah, to it. No, and that's the word. That's good, too. I'm going in. Yeah, I can't hold it any longer. Go for it, man. All right. I got you a weapon. Yeah. I got me a weapon. Here we go. Let's cheers before we, before you, you we bite. It. You got yeah, it, okay. brother. Let's go for it. I'm going to go straight sesame seeds, mushrooms, and antelope on my first bite. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. It is really good, dude. Really, really good. If I did cook it myself. <laughs> I could sell this at my restaurant. Do I get a commission? <laughs> <laughs> then we'll have to pass it on to I'll my buddy at the price $2. Then, then we'll have to pass it on to my buddy at hunting camp. You know, so good. Yeah, so goodness good. gracious. And, and you're right. I mean, the... the the sesame that you're getting in that, honestly, it does come through. It punches. There's a little toasted nuttiness on the outside. You got the earthy mushroom, but there is nothing lost in the antelope. No. None of that covered up anything no. because that Montreal steak flavor that mm -hmm. you put in there, mm -hmm. that low sodium soy, I think was an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not overly salty, but it added that rich umami flavor mm -hmm. that you get from soy, mm -hmm. from soybeans. And I mean, it is, it is extremely rich in there. And again, we, we, we hit it fast, but the temperature was high, mm. and I think we, you know, the, the cook was perfect as far as the, the time. I'm gonna and, go for a crispy tater. And you really, you know, for, for the people out there that are watching this and they're, they're saying, you know, you know uh, I just wanna make sure that I don't overcook or undercook it, just mm. cook it, it's gonna be fine, I promise you. Yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still fresh, fresh harvested, a great hunt. Brother, this is an awesome story. This is an amazing dish. I understand exactly why your friend was a little guarded about his recipe. Yeah. And I hope he knows that we just gave it to America. Yeah. And and I, it was special for you to share this with me, and, and I enjoyed hearing the story about the hunt. Yeah, I'm glad to share it with everybody else. Yeah, so thank you all for tuning in for another episode of Prime Cuts Wild Game Edition. I'm David Bancroft with Joe Thomas, and we'll catch you again. Yeah. We got some eating to do. I'm not done yet. <laughs>